So I got this cart here. I bought it for about 125 bucks. I had to put an engine on it. You know, did a little bit of modification. But right now I have a uh, this 40 chain. It's a 12 tooth clutch and a pretty big uh, sprocket down here for the wheel. But it it has you know decent amount of torque, but top end's kind of lacking. It's got a decent amount of torque, and I just really want a little bit uh, more speed out of it. So not necessarily acceleration, just, you know, once we get going, I uh, just want a little bit more mile per hour out of it. Now it has the factory valve springs in it. Uh, got some 18 pound valve springs I'm gonna put in it to just see if we can pick up a little more engine RPM and pick up a little more mile per hour at the top I do have my little tachometer here so we'll be able to see what we get I'm gonna go ahead and take the spark plug out because we're gonna need to be able to see that piston I'm gonna change the springs with the head on so we want to make sure we don't drop those valves down into the cylinder so we need to take a look at the piston just to make sure it's up at the top of the stroke. And then we'll take the valve cover off here. Of course, just four bolts here. And of course, this is the my spray paint hydro dip valve cover. Do have a video, or a couple videos, spray paint hydro dipping things. So before we do anything else to start messing with the rockers or the valves or anything, we're gonna make sure we have the piston top dead center. So just looking through this part plug hole here, gonna make sure that piston's all the way at the top. Actually, the lighting's not too good, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick something in there just so I can get a feel for where that piston's at. Okay, piston's all the way at the top, and just so the valves don't drop down in the cylinder while we're doing this, I'm gonna feed a little string in there. Or a little rope. It's just from an old pool, broken pool start I had. And I'm just feeding the rope down through the spark plug hole. Just to fill up that little bit of space between the head and the piston here. Okay, it looks like that's about all that's going in. Leave yourself a tail so you can get it out, of course. All right, so I'm gonna to try to leave the rockers on and stuff uh, while I'm doing this. I'm just gonna press down on the spring just to get the uh, push rods out of, their, out of their groove here so the rockers can flip up. that one out of the way actually we'll take that out that one's a little snug now there are some lash caps on top of these 
valves here. Be careful with those, they are uh, tiny and I think our push rods are blocking the hole just so it won't drop down in the head if we turn them loose. You can use a magnet, it's probably the better option here, but just be careful. These lash caps are tiny and easy to lose. We don't want to drop them down in the engine either. So of course, make some, sure you got something blocking the hole that the uh, push rods go down into while you're taking these lash caps off. All right, so just to uh, to get the uh, retainers off of the valves here, you just need to kind of push them to the side. There's a bigger hole on the side and the tip of the valve will just slide right out of there. So just push it to the side and the retainer and the spring come right out. And now we'll do this for the other side as well. We have our 18 pound valve spring here with a little green mark on it and this is the factory spring. Now you can see just by pressing on it one's a little stronger than the other. You can also see a size difference between the two. Of course the 18 pounds a little thicker than that factory one. Now this will keep so right now the valves float um, I think around 5200 RPMs. Uh, this will keep, these stronger springs will keep the valves from floating at higher RPMs. So we'll be able to get a little more RPM out of this engine before the valves start floating. So we've got our 18 pound spring here. Got the factory retainer. We're just gonna put it back on here and we'll put the uh, clip the retainer back in the same the opposite of how we took it out so just put the end of the valve through the big hole and slide it over now these are going to be these are a little stiffer than the other ones so it won't be quite as easy there we go so that's clipped in now time for the exhaust side Being nice and irritating. There we go. Make sure that's set on there real good. All right, so the new springs are on. So now that we've got the springs in, we need to put the lash caps back on and just be careful again, you don't drop them down in the engine because then you are gonna have to take it apart to get them out. And now we're just gonna compress the spring here. So I'm just using this because it's starting to hurt my fingers. So we'll pr compress the spring to get the push rod back in its seat here on the rocker. Okay, push rod's in its seat. And you want to make sure the push rod rods are down in the seat or they're tap it down in the bottom of the head as well. And you'll know because the push rod will sit up a little higher once it's in a seat. And now you may not have to reset, reset the valve lash after doing this, but I'm just gonna double check. Now I am gonna set it to uh, 0 0.003 using my little filler gauge here. So we'll check the, we wanna make sure the engine's at top dead center. There's no tension on the valves or anything. Okay, set the top. Rocker's still a little loose. That one's loose, so we're at top dead center. What I'm doing is I'm 
sticking this filler gauge down between the lash cap and the little threaded piece here on the rocker. And you want the filler gauge to be snug, and, but still slide in there. Now right now it's not going through the exhaust side. Okay, looks like intake side's good. So what I'll do is just uh, loosen this little lock nut here. Okay. So once we loosen that, we can adjust this threaded piece here. I'm going to back this nut off a little bit. And I'm going to take the filler gauge, put it between the last cap and the threaded piece, and we're just going to tighten it down until we hit that filler gauge there. And it's still, still loose. Okay. I'm actually going to leave it in there while we tighten this down. So you just want to hold the little threaded piece so it doesn't turn while you're tightening the, the lock nut. And I actually just turned it a little bit. So I'm going to tighten it back down. I'm just going to hold it there and we'll tighten back, tighten this lock nut back down. So this is what's going to lock it in place here. And as you can see, we kept our threaded piece steel. Just tighten this little lock nut down. Okay. Looks like we're sliding in and out. Not too tight, not too loose. Now we'll put the valve cover back on and we'll see how much RPM we picked up. So I'm actually pretty pleased with the results. Um, with the factory valve springs, I would hit about uh, 5,200 RPMs before we'd float the valves. And now with the 18-pound valve springs, it looks we hit about 5,600 RPMs, a little above that. And 400 RPM difference doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually made a huge difference. Before I would get into it, and you know feel like the power almost ran out instantaneously um, but that extra 400 rpms made a world of difference um, it feels like it has a power for much longer and have plenty of speed up top there's a, a neighborhood dog that usually chases me and it's the fastest dog i've ever seen but it usually it can hang around with me but i don't think it's going to be able to hang around with me now 